the release of Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins got me thinking, were the other two actually any good? So I went back and watched them. Uh, ooh, here are my thoughts. Starting with G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. Based on the American media franchise and line of action figures by Hasbro, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra follows two American soldiers, Duke and Ripcord, aka jaw clenching Channing Tatum and comedic relief Marlon Wayans. So after being attacked by the bad guys, they get recruited to the Joes, a group formed by the top men and women from the best military units of the world tasked to protect it. Creepy bad guy companies, Mars or whatever, develop nanotech based weapons capable of doing, you know, bad stuff. Warheads get stolen, we meet the rest of the team, we train, cross, double crosses, the Eiffel Tower crumbles, fights, explosions, you know the works, nothing really memorable about the story. We're here for the Joes. So it's basically the bad guy got the thing, we gotta stop the bad guy. Did all this mixed in with a lot of unnecessary flashbacks to try to make sense of character development. Done poorly, by the way. Anyway, the movie was released in 2009, when the blueprint for making a superhero movie was still in its infancy. There was no real such thing as a superhero body. Okay, 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 except for Ferrigno. Jesus. So it has a lot of cheese found in movies prior to the MCU and Nolan's Batmans. Cheesy one-liners, forced cheesy acting, cheesy dialogue with emphasis on characters' names so you know who they're supposed to be. Cheesy characters, not even Joseph Gordon-Levitt could distinctify the cheese of this big bad. The stank is so bad, he doesn't entice fear, he looks like a punk, I could just steal his lunch money from him. All this coupled with nonsensical story things like how two random army guys get to become the two top Joes of the world, yet you didn't recruit them prior to this mission, you even passed on one of them, I thought y'all were the best, what happened? and then spending all this time training for big missions. And yet, when the mission begins, they get stuck in a suit they know nothing about and have them rumbling, tumbling, stumbling all over Paris. Plus, nothing simmers. It's so fast paced, it doesn't give you a chance to take anything serious. All this along with probably the worst boss fight ever. I mean, it just starts to pile up with the story and stupid character development, makes the movie drag big time. Okay, 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 okay. Now here just to bash the movie. <laughs> He's already dead. There's also some good in here. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, hold on. Uh, okay, okay. Snake Eyes has awesome and elaborate sword fights. They cover bits and pieces of his origin story as an old friend white kid running around Japan. I mean, the kid fight's pretty cool. Honestly, the best part of the whole franchise. Um, let's see. What else? Um, well, uh, there's a lot of boom booms. I will give them credit. You can see the budget in the film. They try hard to win you over with cool slow-mos and flashy CGI pieces. The Joe suits for what they are, I guess, are pretty cool. And for the time, the visual effects were pretty standard, I guess. Nothing too crazy, but in the pocket of being decent and pretty good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. here's something. Uh, the tech in the world is pretty cool and creative. The vehicles and weapon designs are pretty interesting and honestly, some of the best part of both movies. That was the glimmer of hope I held on to. The potential of what they could do with that technology from that world. Which brings me to the second one. Released in 2013, G.I. Joe Retaliation. With the president impersonated by Cobra. No, not that Cobra. This Cobra. They're able to make the Joes out as traitors. Returning star Channing Tatum traded in his comedic relief for a medium-sized rock. This is before he mega-evolved into the rock. So after Cobra gains access to warheads and set themselves up nicely, they hit the Joes with an airstrike. The surviving Joes regroup with the OG G.I. Joe Joseph Colton aka Bruce Willis to conspire an attack to overthrow Cobra Commander. Unlike the first movie, the second one strips off all the cheese, where instead of cringy jokes, they got a chuckle or two out of me. It takes itself more serious, as well as the Cobra Commander played by Luke Bracey. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was off running around making a little film called The Dark Knight Returns or something, and honestly, he did a better job than Levitt did. No shade, it could have been the script that made the difference, but it's noticeable. And even the design of the character, bringing back his classic look, mixing it with some 2013 flair, made him more believable, which is 100% opposite of RZA. 
plain blind master. Lord have mercy. It looked like he loved the G.I. Joes as a kid and pulled a few strings to be in the movie. He was pretty foul. I'm sorry. The rest of the cast performance was okay. Nothing breathtaking. This is a hot take. But acting wise, it could be one of the best rock performances. Simply because he made me believe in what and how he was doing things. I felt him being more comfortable in that role and it translated to a good performance. That's all I'm saying. Don't come for me. He didn't win any awards. I'm not giving him any awards. Chill. All I'm saying is The Rock can play a big guy who wants to explode stuff. The second movie is more but better. More cool fights, more cool tech gadgets, more splodies, less flashback, less unnecessary backstories. Because the first one fell so short, the expectations for the second one were so low, help me not be so harsh about it. It's just that the first one is kind of bad, that it helps the second one if you watch them back to back. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. There are huge plot holes and things kind of heartless that don't make sense. I mean, Roadblock aka okay, Dwayne doesn't even mourn the death of his best friend at all. Not a single tear, nothing. But if I'm just sticking to the positives here, the gadgets, as I stated before, the different fight sequences, a wall fight, tank battles, a shirtless fight. Shout out to Storm Shadow. Goddamn, son. They did enough to keep me mildly entertained, and I guess that's all you can ask for. I don't believe these movies are the worst ever made. I see the potential, and with both movies combining over half a billion dollars, I can see why Paramount decided to reboot it, with heartthrob Henry Golding playing Snake Eyes. And I like how they're doing it. Hopefully they ease into a Joe-verse with at least two good movies before they bring the whole gang together. Even though, if you look at reviews, it looked like they fumbled the first movie already. As we know, establishing a good core base of characters is the most successful way to build a universe. But let's not just outright copying them either, Paramount. I mean, come on. So tell me what you think or thought of those movies back then when you saw them. Have you seen them? Have you ever seen them? Are you going to? Have you seen Snake Eyes? Are you? Any and all comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like. Subscribe to the channel so you can get notified every time we drop another one of these. It really helps out the channel and I greatly appreciate it. Till next time, always and forever, you do you.